I'm, I'm going to get started for the sake of time. So I appreciate you coming on so late. Um, I know everyone is probably exhausted and zoomed out already. Um, but all of you should have received um, the packet, the reconciliation packet of stuff that I either dropped off. Yay. Oh, I have mine right here. Um, and so after I tried to make it pretty um, inclusive with everything, um, what everyone needed, um, but I wasn't sure um, who had other questions. So I just kind of wanted to go through it. Um, I had a couple people say that after they saw the packet, they were really nervous <laughs> about everything and feeling overwhelmed. And so the very last thing that I want everyone to feel, especially now, is being overwhelmed. So please don't, um, I can't tell you not to feel that way, but please know that that is not what my hope is for reconciliation. Um, just admitting one more person. And um, so we'll end our meeting with prayer. I know it's late, but I, I do want to make sure that we pray every time. So um, we'll just recognize that God is in our midst when we are gathered and we'll pray at the end of our meeting. Um, the very first packet that I wanted to go over is the one with, um, it's like a little letter from me. Oh, one more person is coming in. Um, and, and so this letter really basically outlined the entire prep. Um, really, the important thing is that you're already doing reconciliation prep at home. You may not realize it, but when there is a fight among siblings or um, even among us adults and spouses, we can... Um, model reconciliation. So one thing in our house um, that actually, I, it hasn't backfired, but it's kind of, it's fun to listen to. Um, we've taught the kids, you know, if they're, when they're sorry, um, to ask for forgiveness. And so they say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And most time what comes out of the other person's mouth is, I'm not ready to forgive yet. <laughs> And so we have to recognize that not all the time, just because somebody asks for forgiveness, that we are going to be ready to forgive. The idea is that we are using those words every day. Um, and it may take a, a day, but to be mindful um, that if somebody does ask for forgiveness and we aren't necessarily ready to offer that or accept the forgiveness that we go back to it later. So it's not just left open in the air, but um, have the person say, you know, are you ready to forgive me yet? Or what, what else can I do to help you forgive me? Um, so what you're already doing at home, the, the way that you're role modeling forgiveness by saying or asking for forgiveness, saying that I'm sorry and saying, I forgive you. Um, you're already doing that. So just keep role modeling that because one thing that we don't want um, is that the sacraments that we celebrate as a church to only be celebrated at church, okay? So we celebrate the Eucharist every Sunday at church, but you're also celebrating the Eucharist at home when you have meals together. We're not only celebrating the sacrament of reconciliation when we come into church, we're celebrating that sacrament with everybody in every one that we come in contact with, okay? Um, so we wanna make sure that we're modeling that and that it becomes, the, the verbiage becomes a part of their daily living and that it's not something we only do at church. Um, the other kind of, number two major priority aspect of reconciliation prep is that us as parents are prepared to not only prepare ourselves or our children, 
but prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament. Um, I minister in a different way than um, other ministers, or if you've had, um, if you've had me in the past, it's pretty similar. If you had Mr. Fishgold, I know he, he prepared a little bit differently than me. Um, but my biggest thing is to prepare with the kids. Um, I like to be really relatable with the kids. When I made my first reconciliation, it was a horrible experience. Um, I don't tell that to the kids, but I do mention that it, it wasn't as, um, it wasn't a great experience. So we had to memorize the act of contrition. I memorized it with my best friend. I went into the sec uh, the, um, the reconciliation room and my mind completely went blank. And the priest made me sit there until I remembered every single word of the act of contrition. And I was in there what felt like 10 minutes. I'm sure it was only like five, but I came out and I'm in tears and all my friends are like, oh my gosh, what did you do that you were in there so long? Um, so I don't like to put the pressure of the sacrament on the kids that I had. Um, and so if, if we as parents have reservations, if we had a bad experience with reconciliation, um, try to put that aside and, and don't let that kind of become the priority of conversation. And when the kids receive the sacrament, we really, we, myself and Father Rob, encourage the parents to also come and receive the sacrament. Um, it really does make a difference if they see you not only receiving the sacrament, but modeling it. Um, it, it brings them at ease as well. Um, a couple years ago, I had a little girl who was very scared to go. And she says, mom, will you go first? And then if you come out, I know that everything is okay. And I got laughing. I was like, what do they think? Like, it's this closet that you're going to go into like this abyss. But to her, that's, that's what she felt. And her feelings were valid, you know, because those are her feelings. So her mom looked at me and she's like, do I have to? And I said, yeah, you kind of do. So the mom went in, she came out and the little girl was like, okay, I'm ready and walked right in and it was fine. So um, I'm not seeing any of this to scare you or to be apprehensive, but the sacrament of reconciliation is really an amazing sacrament. And the reason why um, we can't just say our sins to God and, and be forgiven, because if you're anything like me, you sugarcoat it. And it's a, uh, when I talk to God, it's kind of like, well, yes, I talked about somebody, but they did X, Y, and Z first. But if I'm talking to a priest, I don't have that whitewashing of being able to say, but they did this because then the priest is going to be able to come back and be like, really, that's not how we are supposed to be. So the priest acts as a mediator um, between us and God to really keep us focused on, on our, on our confession. Um, I don't like to use the word, um, like the sacrament of confession or the sacrament of penance, because it puts a connotation of, I did something bad. We really want to focus on the healing and the reconciliation and the mending of our relationship with ourselves, with God, and especially with others. Okay, so you won't hear me saying sacrament of penance or sacrament of confession. It's the sacrament of reconciliation um, because we really, the idea is to refocus that we did hurt um, our relationship with other people, with God and with ourselves. Okay, um, are there any questions so far with that rundown. No, we're good. Okay. Um, so really this packet that I sent out, it does give you um, what your child's role is, guideline um, of readiness. So only you and your child can determine if he or she is ready. Um, just because they're in second grade does not mean that they have the golden ticket. Um, 
if they aren't ready to receive, this is not a sacrament to push because we don't, the last thing we want is for them to have an experience like mine, where my second reconciliation wasn't until I was a senior in high school because of the first experience that I had. We really want to make this the loving relationship, um, healing sacrament that it is, and not something that's scary. Okay. So if they're not ready, then we're not going to push it. Um, and then it also has some ideas of reconciliation at home, which is what I already spoke of. And then how to interweave it um, as in the whole family. So some of you have older siblings. This would be great if they've already gone through reconciliation, bring them into the preparation. If they are the oldest, bring their sibling into the preparation of reconciliation because like I said, if everyone's modeling it, it's going to be that much easier and much easier for them to understand why we celebrate the sacrament than if it's just you're preparing for the sacrament and you're going to do this. Okay. Um, the next packet preparing for first reconciliation, this is your guided outline. Um, so I have broken it down in different sections for you. So there's, for each lesson, there will always be a background. So it'll explain why we're doing this particular topic. There'll be a reflection for you to look at as parents beforehand, but also um, as a family. There'll be an invitation. Um, and then there will be a scripture story. And of course, we always want to tie in our Catholic teaching. Okay. So that's something that's really important because it's not just, okay, we just do this because that's what we're told to do. But there's, there's uh, interweaving of different aspects of our Catholic teaching. And we want to make sure that they're all, um, combined and, and situated. There's going to be an activity. Um, sometimes there'll be a faith summary and definitely a closing prayer. So that is one thing that I'm really big about is to either start or end always with a prayer um, and, and make sure that wherever you are doing the prep, that it is um, a time where they know that you're gonna focus on them and the family to prepare for this, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have a date for our celebration yet. So really this, this guide of, um, of what to do and when is really whenever it fits in your family timeframe. So I know that a lot of you are juggling um, in class at, at, for school but also at home for school. And there's other things that are going on and things like that. So I don't wanna say that do what you can because it's, it's important and it needs to get done. But if you wanted to make it where you take one lesson and you work on it Saturday morning at breakfast with the whole family, um, that's fine. If you want to do everything but the activity and talk about it at, dinner and then have your um have your child do the activity later on by themselves or you can say okay for the this week we're going to do or on monday we're going to talk about the background and the reflection and then on tuesday we'll do the scripture on wednesday we'll talk about the catholic teaching and do the activity so really this is just a vision board for you to figure out how it will fit into your family schedule. Um, I do have families that are like, no, I don't like that because I need to be told when I need to do it and when it's due. Um, so if you have, if you are of that mindset and you need me to say, okay, this week I want you to do lesson one and, and things like that, I can certainly break it down into a schedule for you. Um, but then I have other families that are like, I can't do that because I already have so much on my plate. So I put it on, 
I kind of, I'm putting it on you to, to figure it out, but if you need more direct specific, um, this is what you need to do and when, I would be happy to do that. Um, my son Connor is also preparing for uh, reconciliation and communion. So he will be along doing this with all of you. Um, and we usually do ours after dinner. Um, so kind of before bed, after dinner, to kind of end the night together as a family. Um, but you can do it wherever. You can even, if, if you want to bring it in the car with you and do um, like the faith sharing portion of it and talk about it together in the car, that's fine. So it's, there's really no right or wrong. It's, it's what you can do when you can do it. Um, and as long as it is completed. Um, with that being said, I do not need any of the activity sheets to be handed in. I don't correct anything. Um, we're all adults. We know this is important and it needs to get done. So that's, that's how I um, prepare. We will be gathering either via Zoom. <laughs> can see a little shadow behind me. That's my oldest who doesn't want to go to bed right now. Um, yeah, and so we will either be having three in-house sessions or three Zoom sessions with your kids. Um, I'm hoping to do in-house just because I do some science experiments and some hands-on activities, and it would be a lot cooler to do it in person than try to do it over Zoom. But I understand everyone has a different comfortability. There are only 12 students um, that are preparing. So realistically, we all could be at our own table up in the community center, six feet apart, and go through um, making sure that everything is clean before and after. So that is not, that's not a problem on, on my end to make sure that it is safe for everybody. Um, so I will let you all know when those dates are. The one thing that I don't want to do um, is because there's only 12 is I don't want to do like half on Zoom, half in person. Um, I've been doing that with confirmation and it gets very tricky because um, it's just a different experience. So I'd like the kids to either have all on Zoom or all in person. So everyone is getting the same information at the same time and having the same experience. Um, other big thing is knowing our prayers. Um, so last year, um, your kids were in first grade, they would have already started to learn their, our father, the sign of the cross and the glory be. We are adding into this, um, the act of contrition. I've also added the confidier, which sometimes we say at mass. So it is different than the act of contrition, similar but um, that's the one we would say at mass instead of Lord hear our prayer um, or Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Sometimes we would say the confidier. Um, the act of contrition, I just wanna remind everybody, the one that I have in the booklet um, is one version, okay? It may not necessarily be the version that you learned when you prepared for the sacrament. There isn't one particular act of contrition. So this one is a good one for the kids. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot of the uh, vows and thighs and, and um, woes. <laughs> so it's easy for them to learn. Um, but as if you have one that you already have been teaching or that you've used as a family already, you can use that one. The act of contrition is an act of contrition as long as it has three main parts that you say that you're sorry, you ask God for forgiveness, and you um, um, work and you say that you're going to work hard to not do it again. Okay. So that's as long as it has those three, anything that you say with those three parts is considered an act of contrition. Um, we do have little handouts that we allow the kids to have while they are in um, the reconciliation room with Father Rob. It has the act of contrition, so if they do forget, but but it but it really but it really is.
pretty much memorized. And that way they know that it's, um, you know, it's an important prayer that we, that we need to know and have, have in our mind. Um, but they won't, they won't be like me where <laughs> they won't have anything in case they forget if they're nervous or whatever. Um, they will have like a little cheat sheet, but it's really important. And so really easy way to help your kids memorize prayers is just to take one line a day or one line a week um, and then just keep repeating it or have it be your family prayer each night. Um, and that way they'll get used to it. They'll get used to saying it. Um, and it's not something that you're kind of cramming for the night before the celebration. Um, then the reconciliation resource packet that has everything that you will need that is in this booklet. So if it says go to resource number one, you go into this packet and you find it. If for some reason um, this packet that I made used to go along with an actual workbook, um, but I did not purchase the workbook for the last couple of years, um, just because it was really, I felt like it was more busy work than helping the kids understand. So I did go through this to make sure that there was no reference to that book, but if for some reason there is, forgive me. So if it's not in this, you don't need to worry about it. Does that make, does that make sense? Okay. As many times as I edited this, um, there may have been a couple mistakes. Okay. And then also on the back of this words to know, um, they don't need to have these memorized, but these are words of reconciliation. And so it is really important that maybe you start to use some of these words in our conversations. Um, Definitely conscience, you know, there's a spot in our booklet where you can watch Pinocchio, where Jiminy Cricket meets Pinocchio. That's a great metaphor um, and symbolism for your conscience because of course, Jiminy Cricket is like, no, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. It's not a good idea. And then of course, what does Pinocchio do? He does opposite of whatever Jiminy Cricket says. So that's um, really good to start thinking about that you know, what is your conscience telling you? Is it telling you to do the right thing or the wrong thing? And then of course there's consequence. Um, there's consequences to your behavior and there will be consequences in your penance. So Father Rob or any priest would be giving you a penance, which is something to do um, to kind of, I don't, I don't like to use the word like make up for because you're not really, you can't really make up for that sin but it helps you as a reminder to not do it again, okay? And it acts as a, um, a gateway or a bridge to healing those relationships that, that happen. Um, so those are really good. And, and the words, the definitions that I have in here, they aren't specifically kid-friendly. They are more for us adults to learn the words and then be able to um, respond to our kids however they would understand that because every kid is at a different level of understanding things so we want to make sure that you know your child you know what they're able to understand um, at that time all right so I think I covered most of the questions that I already received before this zoom but I just want to open it up. Um, if anyone has any questions, if you're not comfortable speaking them out loud and you want to uh, private message me and then I can answer them, that's fine. But I just wanted to meet with everybody just to kind of go through the expectations. Um, it is a little bit different than if you prepared last year or the last two years with Mr. Fishgold, but if you prepared with me, you know, the first time around, it's pretty similar. So any questions or comments, concerns about reconciliation, or we can even move into first communion questions if you have. 
Hey, Karen. It's hey, Brittany. Karen, it's Brittany. Okay. Hey, Brittany. Hey. You. I did. I hear you say that correctly. That you really don't have a time frame yet for like what month they're hoping to make their reconciliation in. Right. So okay. what what we decided, Father Rob and I decided, is that we would we would prepare in January and February, mm -hmm. and then celebrate. Um, prior to we've always done this that we've celebrated prior to first reckon or first communion mm -hmm. so we will most likely probably have something in march and then maybe something in april um but if you wait until april you will be overlapping finishing up reconciliation and starting first communion mm -hmm. the prep for Does communion okay yeah, so I don't have a specific celebration date yet. Mm -hmm. um, the The turnaround between Christmas and Lent was super fast this year, so the staff were already planning Easter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, guys, we gotta get a we gotta get a date, but it is on my radar. Um, and what what it will be is probably a Saturday afternoon before the four o'clock mass. Mm -hmm. So probably like Saturday at um, or not the four o'clock mass, five o'clock mass. Um, so like Saturday at three o'clock and whoever can make that would come. And then if somebody can't make it, then we would have another celebration. But the Saturday at three seemed to be a good, um, a good time frame mm -hmm. in previous years. Perfect. Does that does that yep. answer? No, nope. no, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once, um, like the end of March, if everyone can kind of have their reconciliation stuff completed, then that way we can start with first communion. Okay. Yep. That's helpful okay. just for kind of a loose timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So April pretty much, um, like, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. The big, like beginning middle of March, if you could be done with reconciliation, because March, April, we'll do preparation and um, the celebration for communion will most likely be that first weekend in May. God willing, COVID isn't rampant. Us right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And with, um, with the celebrations for both communion and reconciliation, we have plenty of space. Um, we are not even at capacity for 50% for our weekend masses. So we can fit, um, we just got word from the governor or from the diocese today that the governor allows 50% now. So our 50% 50, 50 capacity is 300. Um, and so we, we aren't even close to that. So what we'll do is what I, similar to what I did for um, Christmas, if you were with us for Christmas, I did a seating chart. And so we'll make sure that everyone is spaced. Um, each family will have their own area, um, but it will, I mean, we, we don't, we're not allowed to have first communion outside of a weekend mass. Um, so it will be at the weekend masses. We might just have to spread them out depending on how many people. Um, but we, we should be okay for any of our celebrations for right now. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you everybody. I'm, I'm sorry that this meeting was late. I promise I won't have another 8.30 <laughs> meeting unless it worked for everybody. <laughs> and then maybe we will, but. Um, so most likely sometime in February, I will be hosting is, oh, that's what I wanted to, is everyone comfortable if I do host an in-house up in the community center with parents and child, it would be no more than an hour. Um, the community center, I would put only the number of tables that we need per family and have them spaced out. So, Okay. Thank you, Brandon, for your thumbs up. I know I like those little, those little reactions. All right, so I'll plan on that sometime in, in February. Um, and then that way, cause I do science experiments. 
and it's really fun. And I let the kids do them too. So um, I am a hands-on um, tactile <laughs> person. So it, it's hard for me to do Zoom meetings. All right, so I will plan on that. I will give you guys dates or a date for that um, when I get back into the office, which will probably be middle of next week. I'm working from home. Um, I had meniscus surgery last Friday, so I am not in the office, not walking very well. So if you do need to get a hold of me, feel free email. I have access to that. Um, and you have my cell phone if you do need anything else before that. All right. Oh, let's end with, um, after I just said I like to end with prayer. <laughs> okay. So if you have your, I'm going to take it out of the booklet. Um, and it's the lesson three on page four, the closing prayer. I like this one. So let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we say yes to you, God. We say yes to your love for us. May we receive your love. May we rest in your love. We say yes as well to your loving will for us. We say yes to all you would teach us and change in us. We say yes to you, our love, our life. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Sleep tight. I'm going to go try to get my oldest into bed now. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Bye-bye. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.